Hello YouTube, welcome back to the Mighty Mouse channel. Hey, today I got a special treat for you. Time to do some major construction. I have a gift that a friend made for me on my birthday, and this is called the floating table. And it looks like it's not connected, and it's hard to tell which way is up. They both, both ends look the same. And then, as an added bonus, a piece of artwork. Baby Yoda. He's cool. Anyway, I said to myself, Self, we got to be able to do something with this. He's just sitting there all by himself. It's got to be a show and tell. A piece, a centerpiece, as you will. So, I'm getting out my 3D pen, my PLA, and I got myself some acrylic colors. I think that I can build something right behind Mr. Yoda here, or Baby Yoda, and make sort of a rocky formation or something. I don't know yet. Let's explore and find out what I come up with. Here we go. Okay, so as I'm looking at PLA, almost all of my PLA that I have is shiny. This is the only one. This is an older batch. And as you can see, it's not a real shiny thing. So I think the paint that I'm going to put on here will stick to this best. So I'm going to give this a shot because I'm going to paint the background of Baby Yoda and give Yoda a coat of paint as well to bring him up to his theatrical colors. <laughs> Let's hope this works. It's going to take a lot of work and a lot of detail. Thanks. So I'm going to run a time-lapse piece here and make a section out of this as a test section and then see how the paint sticks to it. Okay, this has cooled off. This has gotten hot because I can tell it went from a copper brassy looking color to a dark color and uh, so it's plenty hot now why I have my soldering uh, stick out is because when PLA comes out it it's gonna form to uh, a bump or a row or something like that a string and on whatever side you glue it down to is your flat side so neither one of these sides are conducive to looking like rock it looks more like something that I made and so you use this uh, heat gun so that you can melt it and reform it and this uh, this PLA like I said is old and so I want to run a test piece on here and then I'm going to try some paint on it and see how well that sticks to it it took about half of what I cut off of that roll uh, to make uh, this one little piece so let's see what we got here this is this wire is gets in the way in a hurry so be careful with this so I have several different pieces uh, that I can use on this but this is my widest and longest one so I figured I could make a nice swatch and that is working out really well. Well that looks more like a rock. The only problem with this is you're overheating and causing melting which then uh, bits and pieces that get stuck on your wand are going to want to burn like that and I got a fan going so it's blowing all that smoke away from me. Although PLA is not toxic, like ABS or something. So I'm going to just do half of this, just to show the difference. And because it got hot, it's reforming on the table, re-sticking. But now it looks more like a rock. So I think when I paint this, it's going to look great. So I'm going to let this wand cool off, and then let this cool off, and come back with some paints. All right, the wand is cooled off enough. Let's see at this. Yep, that comes up. It's good and hard. It's cool. So what I want to do now is uh, practice painting on this plastic. It did turn out a whole lot more shiny than I thought. I don't know uh, how well the acrylic is going to stick to it. But I've got my water. Now... I have decided that I'm going to use this hot orange here uh, to color this 
and uh, save the rest of these because I can mix these to make Yoda's color and for the background rock and tree whatever it is I make so let's open this up real quick I don't know if opening this I would like to keep the tubs in the plastic but sometimes that's just not really feasible There we go. So now, actually, these things come on a rack. I really don't need this tub at all. I, I was thinking that they would stay. Well, I don't know. Maybe that is a good tub. All right, so let's open up the orange one and start some painting. Start little here. Yeah, that probably would take a couple of coats, wouldn't it? I guess if you wanted a more rustic look, you could leave it like that. So what I'll do is uh, come back with a second coat. Now for the sake of show and tell, let me show you what this part here would look like. If you were making a PLA snake, uh, this wouldn't be bad. But like anything, it's uh, it's acrylic, but it's very thin and it's not coating very well uh, with the first coat. So I'm gonna close that, put that in the water, let this dry for a while, and come back. And uh, when I'm done, I'm going to paint that side so we can see what that looks like. Then I'll have a pretty good idea of what I can do to make a painted rock. Be right back. All right, this has sufficiently dried. Been about an hour. And uh, it feels like it's stuck on there pretty good. It does peel off. So you best not touch it. I'm going to finish it out with half of it being colored solid and the other half, this part here, I'm going to put on a little bit of wash brown. To give it a different look. You know, these things go a long way. I was worried about <laughs> running out. <laughs> Never painted with acrylics before, so first for me. Let's go back to the orange. Trying to get a solid color where we get rid of the black. And that's where I think it's going to take a lot of paint because it's just sitting on the surface and eventually you'll get the surface sitting on the surface, the paint surface sitting on the paint surface. That's a bit thick. I think that as I continue on, this would eventually start covering itself. I don't know how many coats it's going to take, but I need to know. And that's why I'm doing it on this. Another thing is, I can do a little spot back here to get it started. I'm not going to do a bunch, just a little bit. Just to show how the the lines disappear and the it shows the need for the wand to remelt this plastic to give it shapes that you uh, desire and uh, I think I can see already that this is already drying uh, the surface of it is dry and uh, pretty much have created a more of a 
hot rock or maybe a coal fire em embers or something like that look to it and I think that's pretty cool looking okay here we go with a third coat now I want to point out that uh, it is finally covering these are uh, these areas here are what I'm concerned about I want to see a solid piece here and how many coats it takes to do that Well, it's almost like as if it's picking up its own self, its own paint, right up off of there. Maybe what I need to use is model paint. I'd be afraid of model paint melting this glue. I mean, melting this PLA. Yeah, look at that. This paint is picking itself up off of there. Weird. It's not reacting like I thought. All right, I made it down to the hobby store and this is what I came up with. I really wanted to have the camo set, which is a flat color. Uh, these are shiny. So I ran a test yesterday with some watercolor and it actually sticks to it pretty well. Um, but doesn't give me the coverage that I want. It's not permanent, but uh, I really feel like that I can paint with these and then give it the camo look or rustic woodsy look with the watercolor very thin, very thin. So what I want to do right now is see how well this covers. I'm going to use yellow uh, because it's the brightest color and see if I can cover this with one coat. I don't expect it to, but uh, let's try it anyway. So Testers is a, uh, this is an enamel paint, and this is going to stick to the plastic, and, whereas the acrylic did not perform the way that I wanted. All right, one thing's for sure, when you're messing with uh, a, an enamel paint, it's not going to be very water soluble, so to clean this brush, I need to have what, and I actually supply a testers version of a mineral spirits or paint thinner, turpentine, who knows what. So this stuff does have some odors, but uh, you want to work in a well vent ventilated area, and uh, I'm going to have my fan on, of course. Now I need something to put this in, and I think I could probably just use the cap and uh, to keep it from getting all over the place I will put the cap in here and that's how I will clean my brush when I'm done so after some rigorous shaking this looks very well uh, mixed no more no more separation in there so let's give this a shot and see how well it covers That should be enough to clean a dirty brush. Ooh, smell that. Okay. Hopefully it's stirred. Yeah, it looks like it probably would need two coats as well. So I'm going to do that. Let's do a little square right here. That's good coverage. It looks a whole lot more even. Doesn't have a lot of hole openings here. Let's uh, try to cover what we covered with the leftover on the brush. Look at that. So let's try the second coat. I have high hopes. A whole lot better. Try some right out of here. That is a whole lot better coverage. It's still uh, somewhat transparent. And I don't know. Now if I rub it. The uh, paint thinner in the uh, stuff actually wants to come up. So you really don't want to brush too much. 
you'll take up the first coat. I'm just going to chime in here for a moment to make a quick quick statement about uh, working with PLA. Uh, I have this platform that I work on all the time and it serves me well and you can see all the previous projects I got going there. The uh, PLA sticks to it just enough to develop what you need and then uh, it pops up real easy and uh, you can draw on it and everything it's just a one of those particle boards uh, so here I am making the first uh, the front and back of the walls of the cave and not knowing what I'm gonna finish with here okay, it is I'm gonna break in right here uh, and pause for a moment to reflect on the effect that I want inside his cave and so I have the outline of the cave done I'm going to have a rustic looking tree right here. That's why I cut this short over here. And then the cave will come all the way over to this side. But uh, if you've seen my previous videos on making this Christmas decoration, I had taken a modified, I took one of these candles that usually run on a disc battery and I set it up with uh, two AAA batteries and <laughs> two AAA batteries will last for more than one Christmas and uh, it gives it this lit or candled effect which I really like and so this is what I want for his cave but uh, this is just way too large I mean I could fit it in there but <laughs> that doesn't look right so I modified one of these and took out the uh, the bulb itself and set it up on two AAA batteries and uh, I really think that I can set this thing inside of here and build a little fire uh, wall here and that way there this light will reflect off of the back wall it'll give it a real dim effect but I think it'll look pretty cool um, I could test it with some PLA and see what it looks like, uh, but I have a feeling it's going to work regardless. So I'm going to build myself an opening here so that this light can come in right about there and then build a little bit of a, uh, a firewall. So just letting you know that uh, I have a previous video on these. Don't ever throw these things away you get them at the dollar store you know I mean they run on a, a disc battery and then the battery dies and then you throw it away because the battery costs twice as much as the whole light does but uh, they they have such a great effect for other applications and this is one of them so I really think that my little bitty light here is going to look good inside of there and uh, let's continue on now and see how this looks just chiming in here once again to step you through the process I'm going through here. Uh, hindsight 2020, if I had to build this thing over again, I would have done everything on the floor level first uh, and before putting the walls up. So I made a number of changes. Uh, then I had to go through walls and openings and some of them were uh, had to skip because I couldn't get in there with the, the uh, PLA gun. So I'm adding a back wall here, and I could have done that while I had it flat on the surface, but it sticks to itself quite well. So uh, not to worry, you can always make changes. You can even cut it out, melt it out, or anything. And uh, so as you see me doing here, I'm adding the back wall of the cave in there. Then I decided I wanted to have, this was last minute decision, I wanted to have some logs for his fireplace on the side of the, uh, the hut, the cave, or whatever it is. And uh, you have to watch out that you have enough color because a previous color doesn't clear out right away. And this maroon was streaked with black, which was fine for logs. But uh, you make sure that you have enough of the color you want to use left to make sure the previous color clears out. And then I came back and decided I needed to have some sort of a floor in the middle. And I figured a blue carpet, you know, a little green guy, he, he likes blue probably. <laughs> so anyway, I decided to give him a blue floor and I traced the area out on the board and then made it and then glued it in with the PLA uh, because it sticks so well to itself once again. So anyway, the blue got put inside there. 
Then I decided that uh, I would smooth it out with the soldering iron, as you see me doing here. It, it's pretty stinky, so you want to do this step outside. Uh, unless you have control over your uh, soldering gun and you can make it less hot, it won't make so much smoke. That's the best scenario. I found that watercolors did not work on here at all. Uh, the uh, enamel that I got from the store worked quite well, and then I went back over them in some spots with the uh, regular acrylic paint. Now Yoda, he worked out very well with the acrylic paints and uh, I did not have to go back over it twice because he is quite coarse where that fabric is and uh, and that worked out really very well. But the platform he's standing on, I used the black enamel and the white paint. Here you see me trying to slow it down for you. The uh, brush I'm using is called a water brush and you don't have to add water. It'll do it automatically for you and it makes it quite easy. And here you see me doing the final touches, putting the lettering on there. What you seek is seeking you. <laughs> Sounds like Yoda. Yeah, well, it is me.